Sister Alicia. And, uh, there's some echo here, a lot of echo. Um, you know what God is doing. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, my son, my youngest son, Bill, um, <clears throat> Jason's his name. And, you know, he's, you know, he gets... He does good, then, he, then he'll hit a low spot, then he'll come right back up, and he'll hit a low spot, and he just comes back up. And he's really soft-hearted. He's really easy to talk to. And uh, um, you know what God is doing in the uh, in the homes, you know. Well, here the other day, I went up to the post office, and he wrote me a letter. He wrote me a letter, a letter of apology and how much he appreciated um, <clears throat> everything that I've done for him and how I stuck with him and, and uh, <clears throat> not giving up on him and things of that nature. It's really heart touching. It's really heart touching. Because I'm telling you, before it's over with, <clears throat> before Jesus comes back, we're gonna see a lot of family members in this church. And we're, I'm not giving up on my children. And, you know, we're, I'm sitting in the back listening to you guys talk about your children. And you know what? They're coming in, Sister Pat. They're coming in, Dave. There's family members you have. They're coming in. Just keep the faith. You know, just stay the course. I, I always say that to people. Stay the course. No matter what it looks like, no matter how hard it may seem, no matter how hard, uh, you know, it might be just that gut-wrenching experience, but stay the course. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. He's coming, and we need to be ready. And our testimony goes before our family members. When they see you walk the walk, they see you talk the talk, they're coming in. And that's just part of my uh, little sermon tonight. Um, um, Christ coming for the saints. You know, you hear a lot of stuff about pre-trib, uh, mid-trib, uh, post-trib. Well, I got to tell you, I'm a pre-tribber. I'm going up. And you got to get chapter and verse to see this. You know, it's just like anything else. When you have he need healing in your body, you get chapter and verse. When you... Uh, you need a financial miracle in your life, you get chapter and verse. Everything that you have need of in your life is already in the Bible. We need to get chapter and verse. And that's what we stay with is God's word. So uh, in Luke uh, chapter uh, 21, um, I just want to uh, talk about, these are scriptures now pointing to the coming of the Lord. You know, we can get over in the book of Revelation. I'll touch a little bit on that. But these scriptures uh, out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the, uh, the epistles, they're all pointing towards uh, the return of the Lord. And it says, watch therefore and pray always. And that's what we're supposed to do. That you may... Be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Prayer. He's telling you, what's, it, what, what are we, what's he talking about? Escape. Those times in the tribulation period. He's warning us. This is Jesus' words. Hey, be praying always. Stay in the word. Keep your eyes on me. Uh, so that you'll be worthy to escape those things that are coming upon the earth. I, I really believe this. Uh, as long as the church is here, yes, we're going to see some things in the earth, but we're not going through the tribulation period. No way. No way, no way, no way. He's coming. Jesus is coming. And our job is to keep praying, to keep your eyes on him, to seek him, and to stay with him. As many times as our family members might pull on us, friends on the job, people at work or whatever, you keep your eyes on what God's word says. 
in John chapter 14. This, uh, this says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In verse 2, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I would go, I go to prepare a place for you. You know, when Jesus was on that Mount of Olives and when he ascended in heaven, that's the first half of this prophecy that's been fulfilled. The second half is about to come. We're there. We're going. I'm going. I don't care, you know. That's what I tell my family members. I'm going. Get ready. If you're going, if you can come with me. But I, can't, I cannot get my eyes to dwell on what they're doing. It breaks my heart. I see where they're at, but I can't let them pull me back. You just can't let family members pull you down. You and I stay the course. They're coming in. When we hear testimonies like Bill's son and little letters from my son Jason and giving God the glory like uh, Sister Alicia was doing, all those things magnify the, the name of the Lord. We give him all the praise and all the glory. Our children are coming in. There won't be room in this church to contain them. You know? Somebody said they had six boys. Imagine getting there, six boys. And, and if they're married, if they have kids, and they bring their families, it wouldn't take very much to fill this church up. Maybe we'll be stacked up, standing in the back. People lined up against the wall here. That'll be all right. I'm looking forward to those things. I mean, it's going to be a great day. I've said this before. We won't just float into church at 1030 and float out at 12 o'clock. I remember going to church in the 60s with my mom and dad and when we lived in Baltimore. Huh, the kids would go to sleep underneath, us kids would lay down and go to sleep underneath the benches. They were still having church. They were still screaming. They were still <laughs> stomping their feet, clapping their hands and praising and worshiping God. Good things are coming. Christ is coming for the saints and you and I are going to be there. And our family members are going to be there. And we're going up. I just can't wait for that day. I just can't wait for that day. I told you this testimony before. The Lord showed me when I was 20 years old the rapture of the church. He showed me coming through the clouds. I was at work. I'll just cut it real short here real quick. But it, I was at work. The clouds split open. Jesus ascended out of the clouds. He hovered above the earth. He didn't come down to the earth, but he hovered over the earth. And when he stood up off his thrones and he held out his arms, the saints of God went up. And we went up like little missiles shooting off the earth. Well, about a year ago, I was watching this uh, man on TV, and he was telling his testimony about a vision that he had. And he had the same vision I had when I was 20. I mean, the same thing. It described the same thing that I saw, but I saw it 37 years earlier. And he's telling his testimony. I'm thinking, wait a minute. I had the same thing. I even got on the phone and called the guy up. I got his number and I called him. Hey, you know what you just said? I had it 37 years ago. And they were excited. That's just confirmation. Jesus is coming. One of the best things I like about the Word of God, it's, it's just so encouraging. When, we start, when I start you know, thumbing through, like the book of Revelation, <clears throat> Anything that has to do with Bible prophecy, i got to tell you, it really excites me. It stirs my spirit for some reason. And I love sharing it with other people because, uh, you know, it's just infilling. It, it lifts you up. It's a good word. 
it's just God's good word to reassure you about what's going to happen. And you and I are not going to be going through a lot of things that a lot of people um, preach about. It's just not going to happen. I'm not saying that we're going to see some things. We're seeing things now. We're seeing things over in the Mideast. We're seeing uh, things coming against the nation of Israel. We're seeing uh, the ungodly, not just here in America, but all over the world. You know, they, uh, like in, you know it, it happens in Canada. It happens in Mexico. It happens all over. It's just not the good old USA these things are happening in. It's affecting the whole world. In 1 Corinthians 15, 51, this is another one I really love. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. <clears throat> Praise God, we're going to be changed. Can you imagine just walking in one day and kabam, all of a sudden, you were in the presence of God. This old clay body that we look out, you know, this is just a house. Let's face it, this is just a house of clay. Your spirit man looks out of these eyes. You see, when you go to the grave, this body goes to the grave, but the real you goes on. You know, it doesn't matter if we go by the way of the grave or by the rapture of the church. You just keep the word of God in your heart. Keep him before you because you're going either one way or the other. One out of one dies. Like it or not, one out of one dies. You know, my dad just passed away here, here in uh, December. You know, watching him in that hospital bed, he'd raise his arms up. Well, yeah, I mean to tell you, Bill, <laughs> the old man would raise his arms up and just worship God. Just worship him and worship him and worship him. He couldn't talk, Sister Pat. He tried telling me things. I, I, he just couldn't get it out. But all of a sudden, his hands would go up, Brother Dave. And I mean, to, I mean to tell you, I told my sister, he's seeing something. He's seeing something. Even though I couldn't see it, my sister couldn't see it. But I know in my heart, the old boy is seeing something. I mean to tell you. I was excited. Not because he died and left this world. But I knew as soon as he left that body of clay that he was standing in the presence of the Lord. I mean, I knew it in my heart. I mean, you just know down in your knowers. You just know it in here. You know that, uh, that insurance that we have, that peace. You know, you see people when they cry over their loved ones, you know, and they just keep dragging it on and on and on. You know, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to put that aside. you got to let the Lord have it. But I know my dad went on. I know my mother went on. And my mother didn't live for the Lord for years. For years, she wouldn't go to church. Not at all. But there in the end, there was a heart of repentance. And I mean to tell you, when she went on, I mean this peace just flooded that hospital room. Even my daughter that was standing there, she screamed out, Grandma has leaped into the arms of the Lord. Nobody told her to say that, but she knew in her heart. Jesus is coming for the saints. Our loved ones, I'm telling you, just like your son, Bill, that you've been praying for, they're coming in. One by one, they're coming in. Um, <clears throat> behold, I'll show you a mystery. Uh, in verse uh, 52 there. Uh, uh, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Can you imagine? Remember when you was 20 years old, Joe? 
How about 18? Remember when you was 18? You know, you thought you had the world by the hand. You thought you could do anything. Boy, I can't wait until I look like I was 18. Melena, my wife, she pulls out pictures of me. She says, man, that was you when you were 17, 18 years old. Yeah, that's me, baby. <laughs> she goes, what happened? <laughs> she goes, that's not you. You paid somebody to make that picture. <laughs> I said, no, that's really me. Believe it or not, I used to weigh like 150 pounds. And I mean almost zero fat. I'm, I'm telling you. And go all day and all night. Never gave it a second thought. Now come 8 o'clock, I'm just ready to roll up the sidewalk, turn off the light, and go to bed. <laughs> but we'll all be changed. Glory to God, we're going to be changed. And we won't be no sleeping there. We're going to just go on from glory to glory to glory. Over in, uh, um, let's go over to Ephesians 5.25. Christ loved the church. You know, just husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and he gave himself for it. In verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water of the word. That he might present it to himself. Who's he going to present? The church not having spot or wrinkle. That's you and me. Or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. That's you and me. You think you have faults now? You have failures now? We all do. Somewhere along the line, during the month of March, somewhere along the line, you might make a mistake. Somewhere along the line, you might say something wrong. But wherever it is, be quick to repent. Be quick to jump back up and say, Lord, forgive me. Um, brush yourself off and let's just go like a true soldier for the Lord. Don't let the devil get you down uh, uh, what you might say or what you might have done. Don't let him pull you back. You know, we go to work. There's people at our jobs, you know, they say things. There, uh, here this past week on my job, I just started a new job. I did finally get to go back to work. I've been off seven months. It really breaks, it, well, yeah, I'm, uh, but it really breaks my heart. I had to go back. Melana's glad. Uh, so, <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but I'm working with this gal. She's a third year apprentice. And, um, I haven't got to share the Lord with her yet, but there's four of us on the job. And I'm just waiting for an opportunity. And she's no saint by no means, but, uh, but I'm going to have a little talk with her. She's a very nice gal, but her language defiles. <laughs> she's not, oh, okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> But here the other day, you know, uh, you know we, we split up into crews. You know, nobody's allowed to work by themselves, and it's kind of a safety thing, you know. Uh, you always, there's always a group of two and a group of two, you know. And you got skill saws, you have saws running, you have all kinds of power tools around you. And um, so we had our own, her and I, we had our own saws, we had our own drills. Um, things of that nature, and um, um, I'm not the foreman on this job, I'm just a carpenter on this job, and um, so one of the other guys came over and took our saw, 
and took it over and he was using it for himself and uh, the foreman she went to get the to get the saw back and she's just standing there and she wasn't going to say anything <clears throat> and um, the foreman came by and made a comment to her why are you just standing around she says well I come to get the saw he goes well that's a real big pet peeve of mine and I heard it. And um, I'm thinking, wait a minute. These guys come over and take our things. Where, where, where's their, their saws? Where's their drills? There, there's plenty of them. There's no shortage of them. Where are theirs? And it took, I mean to tell you, it took everything within me not to say something to that man. I wanted to say something so bad, I just, you know, Brother Joe, it's like, wait a minute, why are you chewing on this woman? It's not her fault that these guys come and took our things. I had my back turned. If I would have seen it, I would have just gone over there and picked this all up and just drug it back over with me. I wouldn't have asked. I just would have picked it up and said, sorry, boys, get your own things. You know, there's four or five of them right there in the con -ex. There's three, four hundred feet of extension cords in the Connex. There's generators. There's drills. Everything that you need to supply your need with is in that Connex. You know everything that we need is right here in the Word of God. Every tool that we need is right here in the Word of God. There's no lack of, there's no shortage of. It's all right here. You know, it's the washing of the word. It's preparing us. God's word is preparing us for his coming. And we're going. We're going. Just think, Dave, I'm sorry, that new car you drive, you might just have to leave it behind. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it's the truth. Those houses we live in. Bye-bye. Who cares? We're going. Can you imagine what your mansion's going to look like? Do you think for one moment all the giving, all the praying, all the seeking of God's face that you've done that we're going to have a lack of in heaven? No. No, 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 no. I've got to find out where I'm at. How about we, let's go over to Philippians 3.20. Uh, Philippians 3.20. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, or the Savior of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, 21, there, um, who shall change our vile bodies? You know, like I was just saying earlier, this body is just a shell. The real Tim Cook is looking out of these portholes right here. Your spirit man, you know the Bible says, watch what you put before your eyes, watch what you listen to. It's because it feeds into your spirit man. This thing's going to go away. It's going away. This is going away. That's the truth. That's the truth. What? is before your eyes who shall change our vile bodies that we that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the workings whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself get ready for his coming can you imagine being in his presence oh it's going to be a good time it's going to be a good time. When, my, when the Lord showed me that vision years ago, one of the things he showed me, well, I was in this great multitude of people, uh, uh, Pastor Timmons, and my brother-in-law, he stands six foot four. And he had his right hand on my right shoulder. And he had his, he had his left hand, and he was beating me on the back. 
and we were heading into the um, into heaven and there was these beautiful lights coming out of heaven they were just like they I want to say like lightning they were just flashing and things were just uh, was just it was just electrifying and everybody was screaming everybody was hollering everybody was shouting praises I mean it it was just it, your mind cannot even comprehend the excitement that was going on at the rapture of the church and my brother-in-law he was he was a big man and he was beating me on the back and he was screaming i can still see it in my spirit eye today and in my mind's eye he was beating me on the back with his fist just pounding me and pounding me in the physical you know it's like he could probably could have broke my shoulder he's a big man but he was pounding me and pounding me on the back of the shoulder and he was screaming and screaming in my left ear and the only thing he was saying Tim he was calling my name Tim Tim we made it we made it we're home at last and I can still hear his voice today as we stepped into the presence of God then the vision ended that's where I say, no, Lord, show me some more. But it, that's what happened. It's a party. We had our little Jericho march around here this morning. Get ready, Bill. You think you, we had a Jericho march here? You wait until we get there. It's electrifying. Our little natural, physical human bodies would explode. We would, this thing would die. We, it, it couldn't take it. That's why we're going to be changed. That's why we're going to have a glorified body. That's why we can take it. That's why we can receive what God has in store for us there. And uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Lord himself. I love this scripture. I read it all the time. The Lord himself. You know, you've got to encourage yourself in God's word. But I would not have you uh, to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that which are, are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. You know, when we lose our loved ones in Christ, we shouldn't be having fits. I know people, you know... I, you know, we talk about the suicide things. I personally, myself, I don't believe all suicides go to hell. I, I just don't buy into that because the mind gets sick just like the body. And some people do things, um, um, you know, they just, they just do it and they're not there. And I believe God covers them with his precious blood. But then there's the other person. I went to a funeral years ago. A kid had killed himself. And there was such a darkness. There was such a gloom there. I, 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 Joe, I mean, it was just, it was just eerie. It was sickening. I mean, it just made you sick. Not just me that seen it. But I, you know, I know other people felt it as well. I mean, I, you, I, just, I just know. I'm thinking, boy, this kid didn't make it. This boy did not make heaven his home. My brother has a stepson, or did have a stepson. He killed himself over, um, over his girlfriend. And two weeks before, he killed himself over his girlfriend. <clears throat> I dreamed a dream. I saw a man fall into a pit of hell. And, he, and he's, he fell backwards. And when he fell backwards, he fell on a hot grill, like a barbecue grill. And the flesh, the calves of his legs were hanging off him. The flesh on the back of his legs was just hanging off of him. And when he fell, he, he, it was in the, he fell into hell. And he was screaming and yelling and screaming and yelling. 
and I told my brother, I said, you know, I dreamed this dream. I saw a man. He fell into hell. He, was, he fell on a hot grill, and this, he had this blood-curdling scream, and he was screaming and yelling, and just his heart, his heart cried. His heart cried out for mercy, but there was no mercy. And two weeks later, my brother's stepson killed himself. And when my brother got on the phone, I was up in uh, uh, Gold Bar, Washington. My brother called me and told me that, uh, that Christopher had killed himself. And uh, it was just this gut-wrenching feeling. Just a gut-wrenching feeling. It, it, it just broke my heart to hear those words. And I knew what I dreamed two weeks before had come to pass. I knew it. You know, God shows you things. He'll always show you things if you have an ear to hear and an eye to see. If you just listen. But for the body of Christ, those who die in Christ have a whole different future. Thank God. Thank God, Bill, you didn't give up on your son. Thank God I'm not giving up on my boys. Thank God you did not give up on your son. You know, I pray for my kid all the time. And he sometimes he frustrates me. <laughs> he does. But I'm not going to give up on him. There is no devil in hell that's going to have him. And I don't care what it looks like from the natural eye. I just have to keep going back to what the word says. Christ is coming for the church. And these scriptures that I'm showing you point all to his coming for the church. Us, you and me. Um, how about 2 Thessalonians 2.1? In 2 Thessalonians 2.1, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the gathering together unto him. You know, when Paul wrote that, and that little word up there says, now we beseech you. How about we beg you? Paul's saying, I'm begging you. I'm begging you to listen up. To listen to what I have to say. I'm trying to point you into the right direction about the coming of our Lord. I'm begging you. Listen. Beseech also means listen to me. Paul's the apostle saying, listen to me, church. I'm trying to point out something to you. I'm trying to show you something here. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord. He's warning us. Keep your eyes upon him. I plan to keep my eyes upon him, no matter what it looks like. No matter what it looks like in your home life. No matter what it looks like in your on the job, no matter what it looks like in the natural, keep your eyes upon him. Keep your eyes upon him always. You know, I see people do things to my dad. When I was just a kid, they would say things about my dad. And it used to really bother me. And I said, and my dad was a, a strong man. I said, Dad, why don't you go do something about that? And why? He would never retaliate. His words were this, Sister Sharon. You know, Tim, I'll just go pray for them that God will save their soul from a devil's hell. And he would. He would never retaliate. He would never say anything. I'm not saying it didn't aggravate him. I'm not saying some of those things they said hurt him, but he would always go pray for them. And and in the physical, in the natural of me, like, man, you know, if that had been me, when I was 20 years old, I would have gave him a little slap on the cheek. <laughs> but he didn't see it that way. He just didn't see it that way. He just walked with love. This kid named Andy, when he came come to my dad, he was AWOL from the Army. 
and uh, he would, uh, you know, he's, he was AWOL. This was back in, like, 68, the Vietnam era, you know, and um, he was staying at our house. My dad knew he was AWOL, but my dad would never turn him in. He would never, like, got a bed right there to sleep in. And Andy smoked cigarettes. And believe me, my dad didn't smoke. But I remember Andy would come to my dad and he said, Doug, can I borrow a quarter? I need to go buy a pack of cigarettes. Remember when you buy a pack of cigarettes for 25 cents? I do, because I used to go get them for my cousins. They <laughs> the drink <laughs> they 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 give me 25 cents, run up to the store, and you get me this pack, this brand. Okay, I go up there and get their cigarettes. I just, here you go. And I come back and give them to them. But he asked my dad for 25 cents. And my, my dad, as much as he did not like smoking, he would reach in his pocket, and he'd give that boy 25 cents. And he would talk to that kid about the salvation of his soul. He would tell him, Andy, don't you know Jesus loves you? Andy, don't you know God cares about your life? Andy, I mean, my dad treated him just like if Andy was one of his own. Well, finally, they come and got Andy. They finally caught up with Andy, and they took him back to the Army, and they put him in the stockade for a while, and about a year later, he got out, and he was in Florida, and he was on a duck hunting trip. And he tripped and fell on his shotgun and killed himself. And when my dad heard that, it broke his heart. How many times my dad would witness to this boy? Did he have an ear to hear? Did he listen to what, what the Spirit of God was saying? A year later, he was gone. The salvation of a soul. My dad looked past the cigarette smoking. He looked at, the, at this kid's soul, the salvation of a soul for the kingdom of God. People would probably, what? I wouldn't give you some money to buy cigarettes. But my dad took that and used it as a witnessing tool for that young man. And hopefully... Maybe in that moment when all that accident happened, hopefully he had an ear to hear and a heart of repentance because somebody put the word of God into his life. Hopefully somebody would listen. It used to really bother me when you come to churches and people get on the kicks about cigarette smoking. We've all seen that one. I got news. The the spirit man gets saved, but the flesh doesn't. And sometimes the flesh has to overcome some things. It's just the way it is. Believe it or not, I used to smoke those things. I don't even know why I'm going this subject. But, <laughs> but when I, you know, I mean I, come, I mean, I truly got saved at the altar. I mean, I know when I got up from praying, I was saved. And there was a change in me. But I had a little thing called a cigarette that controlled my life. And I, I'll be honest with you. I loved smoking those things. I loved it. I enjoyed it. My flesh enjoyed it. But it just took me a while to get rid of it. but the soul. Christ is coming. And people come in, they have faults and failures in their lives. We don't need to be throwing stones at them. We need to be encouraging them, uh, encouraging them with the word of God to get them where they can come and repent and give their life to the Lord. Let God work on the rest of that stuff. He can do more for a person in 30 seconds than you and I can do for them all year. Um, kind of lost my spot there. Oh, let's go over to Colossians 3, 4. 
I got two more scriptures here. And then I want to read uh, 10 predictions. I have 10 predictions I want to read just to read them for you. In Colossians uh, chapter 3, verse 4, uh, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. We're going to have that new body. We're going to look 20 again. Praise God. Maybe 18. Or whatever you want to be. We're going to look good. <laughs> and we're going to come back on a white horse with him. And we're going to rule and reign with him throughout all glory. From glory to glory to glory. I can't wait. We're going to rule and reign with him. In James chapter 5. Uh, uh, be patient. Therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord, behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. The farmers wait. You know, we like that instant stuff. But we, we're waiting, and he's coming for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he receives the earthly and latter rain, or the early and the latter rain. He's coming, and, I'm, and I can't wait. Over, now I didn't give this, this is going to be on the screen, but I'll finish up with this. Um, ten, per, 10 predictions. This is out of Revelation. Uh, it's chapter 3, 9 through 12, and uh, this is what's in those three um, verses, and I just kind of broke it down, and um, you can take, uh, if you want to look it up, go ahead, but four, four of these have been fulfilled, six of them have not been fulfilled, but they are a future event for the body of Christ, this is for us. Jesus said, I'll expose all liars. That's number one. Number two, I will humble them before you. Humble who? Your enemies. I will confirm my love of you to them. You know, when the world's working against you, coming against you, coming against the body of Christ, God's going to confirm all things for you and I. He's going to make it right. I will keep you from persecution. Now this is where Jesus is talking to the churches in the, in the first three chapters, first four chapters of the book of Revelation. I'm going to keep you from the persecution that is coming upon the earth. We might start seeing some things, but I don't believe we're going to be in those things. I have, I've always thought this, the biggest Revival that will hit the world is going to be after the church is gone, the rapture. They're going to be tearing those doors off to get in here. It's going to be the biggest revival the world has ever seen. Jesus says, I come quickly. Number five. I will make you a pillar in the temple of my God. Can you imagine standing in the presence of God for all eternity? I believe we're going to have jobs to do, but we're going to be in his presence for all eternity. Jesus will say, Jerry, just come up here and sit, be, sit beside me by my throne. What, a thousand years? I'll take two thousand. Because time will cease to exist. And he said, Dave, why don't you just come over here with me? Let me have a little talk with you about what I'm going to do for you in your future here in the heavenly host. And he'll lay out a plan. This is what I have in store for you. It's going to be some good things. It's going to be some great things, a pillar. He says, I will make you a pillar in the temple of my God. You, number seven, 
you will never go out, but will always have a safe dwelling place. I will give you God's name. That's number eight. I will give you the name of the new Jerusalem. We're going to have some new names. Yeah, I might know you as Joe in heaven, but God's going to have a new name for Joe. God's going to have a new name for Sister Pat. He might be a secret name. I don't know, but he'll have a new name for you. I believe we're all going to have some new names. And when he speaks and he calls your name, you're going to hear, your, hear him call you. You'll hear it because it's, it's your name. It's your personalized name. You know, you go to these companies, they have their, like, their own little personal parking spot. Well, you're going to have your own personal name. I don't know what your name's going to be, but you'll know it and God will know it. And number 10, I will, same thing, I will give you my new name. We're going to have a new name in heaven. And it's going to be a glorious name. And Christ is coming for the church. And it was just right around the corner. I really believe that. We're, we're really close. We're just, we're there, church. We're there. And Bill, don't give up on your family. Number one's coming in or has already come in. Get ready for three or four. I don't know how many kids you have or who they are, you know, uh, you know, our families, you know, we don't know everybody's family members here, but, you know, they're coming in. I'm looking forward to it. You know, I might have to jump over where Joe and Alicia is, but, you know, we're, it's going to get to the point. <laughs> it's just going to get to the point. You're going to have to get to church early just to get a seat. And that's going to be a good thing. Amen. Well, I'll just close with that. Look, if you want to stand up, I'll give a little word of prayer. Unless, Pastor, you have anything to, to do? Or, um, my Heavenly Father, I just give you all the praise and the glory tonight. Lord, as you touch each and every heart here. Lord, as you meet their needs, God. Lord, we just praise you and we glorify your precious name. We just thank you for everything that you've done for us. We want, I just want to say thank you for our family.